ever wonder what your leadership style is and maybe what your strengths and weaknesses are as a leader? Well, today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my different leadership styles that I cover in my book and helping you to kind of assess where you are as a leader so that you can understand the strengths, understand the weaknesses, and show up even better for your team. Hi, I'm Amy Walker. I'm a small business strategist, speaker, and author. And thank you so much for watching the channel. If you haven't done it yet, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so you can get notified every time content comes out. I am excited about this video because um, I'm pulling my first book out of the archives today to talk about leadership styles. Leadership is one of my favorite topics to cover. And be, the reason is because I do think that we should not be doing business alone. Um, I do think that we should have teams. I do think that we should have help. I think your dreams are so much more achievable when you have enlisted help. And so that means we got to step into the role of leadership. And being an entrepreneur, you know, some of us come in and we're really good at a core key skill. Um, and we're not as good at the leadership side of our business. It doesn't come naturally. Maybe the communication is a challenge or maybe um, you have the challenge of you expect everybody to think about your business like you do and you can't understand your people. Like, why are they doing this? Why don't they just do what I ask them to do? Or maybe you feel like you are constantly giving and giving and pouring into your people and they're not reciprocating. A lot of these common challenges in our teams are actually because of our leadership style, that we have a unique and distinct style that we show up either in our strength or in our weakness. Now, I will tell you, all of these styles that I'm gonna tell you are great, they're great, they all are. They have their strengths, they have their weaknesses, there's things that you wanna be careful of, um, but they're all wonderful styles. Um, the challenges that your people will sometimes require different leadership skills from you. So while you have your go-to that you lead from, you also wanna be developing the skills of all of the different leadership styles. Okay, so this is all gonna be coming from my book, Walk Your Talk, Take Ownership and Lead, lead Like You Mean It. It's my first book, it is available on Amazon, so you're welcome to go get it. And this is out of chapter two, which is um, helping you to find your leadership style. In order to make it more fun, I called it back to school, and we used, um, now this might relate more to people in the United States, but I used profiles of people that you get to experience in high school. So the first leadership style is the cheerleader. So the cheerleader, their strength is that they are really good at words of affirmation. They're really good at making you feel like you can succeed no matter what. Um, they, they're high energy. They make things exciting. They can get people to feel like they can accomplish anything that they want to accomplish. Um, and they're very, very encouraging. That is the strength. Sometimes the challenge for the cheerleader is that they naturally can positive weigh their energy through life, right? Like they hit a challenge and they're like, I'm just gonna think positive and I'm gonna get in there and jump in with energy and figure it out. And sometimes their team members are not that way. And so the challenge can be that sometimes when there is a problem, um, their team feels like they're not giving them enough legitimate strategy and support in order to move through the challenge and they can get a little bit frustrated. Um, but cheerleaders, we love cheerleaders. I mean, who doesn't love someone telling them that they're great and they believe them and they know they can do it? It's a great leadership style. The next one is the quarterback. So um, this is American football reference, but the quarterback is the person who gets into the game. They do the work side by side with their team. They are the most valuable player on their team and their leadership style is to jump in and work. And this is my natural leadership style. So whenever there's a challenge in the team, my first response is, oh, I can, I can help with that. Let me jump in there and get it done. I can do that work. And so the problem becomes that you disempower your team a little bit because they become very reliant on you. They love you as a leader because they love that you're not positioning yourself above them, but that you'll get in there and work. Um, another thing about the quarterback is they're willing to create wins for other people. It's not always about I have to be the one who wins myself, um, but they will jump in there and set people up to win. 
So it's a very, it's a very good leadership style. The flip side of it is your business can grow to the point where that actually becomes a hindrance um, because you are not empowering the people to be able to run the game without you. And so the game works really well when you're in, but when you go on vacation or you get sick or you need a breather, it can be a challenge. So that's the quarterback. Okay, the next one is the coach. So the coach is also very close to the action, but they stand on the sidelines and they kind of watch the game and they direct and they tell people where to go and what to do. Um, this is a great leadership style for mid-level managers. It's a great leadership style for smaller businesses and smaller teams because it does work really well where the coach can be there and they can kind of watch, see, be aware, know what's going on in all areas of their business. Um, I think you can probably guess what the challenge is, is as you start to grow, there's too much going on for you to be close to all the action. And, um, and so what happens sometimes is people with a natural coach style where they do love to develop talent, right? Like they love to find talented people, they love to develop them, they love to work with them. Um, the challenge can be that when your business starts to grow, you can't be that close to all that action. And so they tend to limit growth because they have to micromanage a little bit. The other challenge for the coach is that they're not very patient with developing um, people who maybe aren't as talented as others. They want to work with the cream of the crop. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a small business owner, that's fine. You can just only hire talented people and when you get someone on your team that's not, cool. If you're a network marketer, <laughs> that's a different story because you kind of have to work with everybody and so you have to develop your patience level with, um, you, you have to increase your patience in being able to develop people who maybe aren't your first choice to work with. All right, leadership style number four is the teacher. So the teacher loves to educate, loves to develop, loves to train, um, loves to teach other people what to do, and um, they really kind of almost take the results of everybody else as a measure of their personal performance. And so if I've got an underperforming team member and I'm a teacher, I'm going to feel like that's a little bit of a personal failure on my part, which isn't necessarily true. So the struggle for the teacher is the teacher has a little bit of a hard time letting people go that are not a fit. They want to believe that they can create success in everybody, that if they just keep going, they're gonna get there together. So sometimes they hold on to people too long and they need to be willing to say, hey, I'm a great trainer, I'm a great teacher, I make this available and you gotta meet me there and you've gotta show me through your work and your effort and your results that you're somebody that I should be spending my time with and, and working to develop inside of my organization. The next style is the counselor. The counselor loves to fix what's not working. They love interpersonal relationships. They're great at establishing trust and rapport. Um, their team is willing to go to them with challenges that happen inside and outside of work. And they really do have like their finger on the pulse of the team and the people. They tend to build a lot of loyalty. The challenge for the counselor is that they also, like the teacher, they hold on to people sometimes too long. Um, and it's not with the teacher, it's because the teacher doesn't want to have failed the students. With the counselor, the counselor more, is more likely to worry about what will happen to the people. But that person has, you know, she's a single mom with five kids. If I let her go, what are they going to do? Or, you know, but that person, is taking care of their elderly parents, or I've even heard, but they have an addiction and we need to help them through this. I mean, like the counselor really wants to rescue everybody. And if that gets put out of proportion, um, one of the quotes that I love in this book, um, not mine, I quoted it from somebody else, but it's that, it's from a book called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers, is that your weaknesses or your strengths turned up too high. When the counselor gets their strength turned up too high, what happens is they start collecting projects um, and trying to use their business as a platform to like help and rescue and save all of their employees, and they get a team full of dysfunction. Um, the other challenge that you can have is that um, you have people who take a little bit of advantage over how kind you are. Um, now, 
Everyone has kind of a primary and a secondary. My first is probably the quarterback, but my secondary is a close toss up between coach and counselor. So I get this one, I get the challenges that they experience here. Um, so with when you are more of a counselor, you just need to have really healthy boundaries and healthy boundaries are gonna be your best friend. The last leadership style I believe is more of a developed leadership style. I don't necessarily know that this is a natural go-to for us, but it is a critical leadership skill, and this is becoming the principal. So as your organization grows, as your team grows, you're going to need to be able to have the skill to kind of step back and know that you're getting the information that you need because you have other people on the front lines that are filling those mid-level leadership roles to be able to give you information. Um, the principal makes the hard calls. They are willing to let people go. They are willing to protect the overall company and the budget and um, say no to things that are gonna be unpopular or say yes to things that are gonna be unpopular because it's truly what's in the best interest of the company. Now again, this is a leadership skill, learning to really develop your communication skills, your ability to communicate, to delegate, and to get other people working to fulfill your vision. That's a skill that I think takes time and takes development, but you can absolutely do it. It's so critical as a leader that you have a really clear vision and a really clear set of values that and a mission and a purpose that you're communicating with your team so that your team is enrolled into where you're going and they're willing to sacrifice for you. They're willing to do hard things for you. They're willing to come together to um, support that vision of what we're trying to create. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, that is one chapter in the book, but this is a great resource for you. The first third is all about helping you understand yourself as a leader. The second third of the book is helping you to be able to understand the people on your team and identify their strengths and weaknesses and how to work with them better. And then the last third is scripts for how to have the hard conversations in business and just you can open it up and be like, oh, I gotta fire somebody. Let me find that one. I gotta address underperformance. Let me find that one. Conflict resolution, let me find the script. So it's a great resource for you. I hope you'll go check it out on Amazon. And I would love to hear from you. What has been useful for you in this video? Um, tell me what your leadership style is in the comments. Hit that like button and share this with the other entrepreneurs in your crowd. So if you are looking to join a community of like-minded entrepreneurs, make sure that you head over to Facebook and join our private Facebook group. It's a place for you to ask questions and get connected. It's called the CEO Spot, and I cannot wait to see you there. I hope you have a wonderful day.